This story is set in June 2015. We see a girl, Lisa, at the airport, who was looking here and there because she was waiting for her friend to come. Outside, her friend Wade was also waiting for Lisa. Along with that, he was also looking at a map because both were going to spend the holidays. Lisa's eyes fell on him, so she came out to him. As soon as she came, she said, I'm so sorry, Wade, I'm late. On which Wade went ahead without saying anything because he got upset. Again and again, Lisa was trying to convince him, please agree. Why are you so upset? On which Wade somehow agreed. Now they sat in the taxi and left. At one place, Wade went inside to rent a car while Lisa was waiting for him. The driver asked her, I think your friend is upset with you. On which Lisa says, yes, that's it. The driver says, come on, he is your friend. He will be agreed, convince him. On which Lisa smiled, thanked him and got off the taxi. As soon as Wade brought the car, both of them immediately sat in it. Before leaving, Wade put his location on the GPS, where they had to go, so that the GPS would tell them the way, and they could easily find their way according to it. Lisa asked him, why are you using GPS? Wade replied, because I don't want to take any risk. We will get help in this way. Now Wade gives Lisa a ring and asks her to marry him. But she was sad. She doesn't answer right now because she was thinking about whether she should marry him or not. Two weeks later, Wade was going to join the army. Now as she doesn't answer him, Wade's mood also gets bad. He also got very hopeful and he puts the ring in the car. Lisa said, keep the ring in a safe place. On which Wade said in anger, what difference does it make to you? You don't want to get married, so it shouldn't mean anything to you. Anyway, after this, they start their journey to reach their destination. First of all, they had to go to the seaside. To keep these pleasant moments with her, Lisa starts making videos. And because he was still angry, he refuses. Please, Lisa, don't bring me in your video. Lisa said, leave the anger. Look how beautiful the city is. It is very beautiful. Look, Wade, you also see. On which he said, I don't know. I am driving. You keep enjoying. So they made a video of the whole way and finally reached their first destination, the seaside. Now, because Lisa was very happy, she gets off the car first. Coming to the seaside, she started calling Wade happily. Come soon, Wade. See how beautiful this place is. Wow, I am very happy to come here. Then when Wade came close to her, they both started taking selfies. Here, Wade was still sad. Lisa started explaining to him, I love you very much. Fix your mouth, please. Anyway, you have to go after two weeks. Now you spend a happy time with me. Wade agreed to her, after which they both went to the sea and started enjoying a lot. They were having a lot of fun. That's when Wade suddenly started suffering from pain. He said, oh God, I have a lot of pain in my leg. I don't know what happened. When Lisa quickly came out of the water, taking him, she sees his wound and said, oh my God, Wade, what is this? You have been bitten by a jellyfish. Hurry up, let's go out. There are jellyfish all around here. Then Wade limped, and as soon as they both came out, the wound was quite big, but he ignores it by not paying attention to it. The day passed like this. At night, they spent the whole night in their car where they talked a lot. Lisa tells Wade to go to an outback in a desert, deserted area. She had heard a lot about that place, so she was insisting again and again that there would be a lot of kangaroos, scary snakes, and many other animals. It will be a lot of fun. But Wade, who had already decided where and how to go, refuses because, in this way, he can't take the risk of going to a new place. But Lisa explains to him, look, we have to enjoy our life. So if we have come here, then we should go there too. Nothing will happen and I am happy. I want to go there. So now Wade has to agree because of her happiness. He puts the location of that place on the GPS. Their journey was going to be 32 hours. Wade also said with surprise, Oh God, we will travel for 32 hours. Lisa said, Please don't refuse because of my happiness, because I want to do an adventure. After which they go to that place, the outback. And Wade, because he wanted to be careful in every way, makes some rules for his journey, like they will not take any shortcuts. That is, they'll not take small ways to reach the destination. In fact, they'll continue to move forward through the GPS on the road. And even if they have to make a phone call, they will not do it from their mobile. In fact, they will use the public telephone so that they can conserve their mobile phone batteries. Now, as they came to the Outback Road, their mobile signals went. Now Wade already knew this thing, 
That's why it doesn't matter to him. In fact, he continues his journey. It was night while traveling, so they spent the night in a hotel. Then the next morning, they left for their journey. Then he saw a dead kangaroo on the road. Lisa said, look there, Wade, a dead kangaroo. Now I told you that there will be a lot of adventures here. Wade said, yes, I agree. But if they are here, then I don't know what can happen. Well, their GPS, after coming to a place, tells them to turn on such a route. The road was a shortcut, that is, the GPS was rerouted. But both were unaware of the fact that they had come on the shortcut route, which they should not have done according to the principal. Because Wade was focused on driving the car and GPS, while Lisa slept during this time, so she didn't know anything. And now they keep moving on the same route. They had come a long way. At one place, the GPS tells them to take a U-turn, that is, to turn and go to the other side. Seeing this, Lisa said, Is this U-turn? Wait, are we going the right way? At first, Wade thought everything was fine. But at one place, he understood that the GPS is telling them to take a U-turn because the GPS has taken them on the shortcut route. That means they had come to the wrong place. They stopped and started thinking about what to do. Lisa said, let's go back. Wade asked in surprise, Lisa, are you kidding or are you serious? We have already wasted a lot of petrol. There is no other way but to move on. So they started moving on this route, but the GPS was still telling them to take a U-turn and was bringing them back again and again. After which, Wade got angry. He left the car and came out. He starts looking around, where there is nothing but a deserted and abandoned desert. At one place when he was standing, a black snake comes crawling there. Seeing this, Wade shouted, Oh God, snake! Listening to his voice, Lisa woke up from sleep. She said, What are you doing outside? Come inside the car. There will be a lot of snakes outside. But when he does not come in the car, Lisa comes out. Wade refuses to go any further because they had already come a long way. And now if they go any further, their petrol will run out. So now they decide that they will go to a higher place so that they can see a road or a town from there where they can go. So now they start moving ahead by parking their car there. But it was night and they began walking. When they look around, they again do not see anything other than the desert. So they decide to come back to their car. They came back by walking, but they do not see their car standing there because they had lost their way. Now Wade's health began to deteriorate because his leg, where the jellyfish had bitten him, was hurting a lot. His wound was getting worse, so now he could not go any further. He sits there, and seeing his health, Lisa gives him water. They also find out that now they are running out of food and drink because they had brought less with them. Now, as we know, the desert area is open, so the nights here are so cold that it can be very difficult to survive without warm clothes. On top of that, there is the fear of wild animals, but they have no clothes to save themselves from the cold and nothing to save themselves from the animals. So even if they do not want to, they have to spend the night in such an open place. As soon as they spent the night, morning came and Wade's leg was in great pain. When he checked his leg, his condition was worse than before because of which he could not even walk. However, both of them went ahead to look for the car. Their hunger and thirst were intense, but they kept moving ahead as per the direction of the sun. Even after walking all day, they did not get anything other than despair. Just like that, another night came where they had to survive the cold, wild animals, snakes, and scorpions. When these two were sitting, Lisa herself asks Wade to marry her, saying, will you marry me? Wade replied, Yes, I still want to marry you because I love you. After talking about their hearts, both of them sleep, but tonight was going to be very bad for them. There were snakes and scorpions everywhere, and a dangerous scorpion passed through Lisa's whole body and entered her clothes. The next morning, Wade woke up first and tried waking Lisa up, but she was not moving at all. Wade got worried and started screaming loudly, Lisa, get up, come on, please get up. But still, she did not wake up, because the night scorpion had bitten her. The color of her face was gone, and seeing her condition, Wade broke down and started crying. Then he picked her up on his shoulder and moved forward. Now his own condition was also bad, but he kept moving, screaming loudly for help. However, there was no one to listen to him. Lisa was still not regaining consciousness, which made Wade more and more desperate. 
he kept trying to wake her up again and again, sometimes lifting her with his shoulder, sometimes using his waist, and sometimes pulling her along. Coming to one place, Wade started digging the ground in frustration, but eventually he collapsed and lost consciousness. After a while, he woke up to the sound of a helicopter passing overhead. Seeing it, a hope was born in Wade. He took off his shirt and started waving it in the air, making sounds so that people could see him. But the helicopter had gone far ahead and Wade was once again disappointed. He then got an idea and picked up a stone to write a big SOS on the ground, hoping someone would see the sign and come to save them. Wade's condition was becoming dire due to thirst and without water, he knew he could die. To stay alive, he decided to drink his urine, but he had nothing to store it in. He used a stick to draw a line on the ground and left to find a bottle or container so he wouldn't get lost. As soon as Wade left, Lisa regained consciousness. When she did not find Wade around, she began calling him loudly. Then she checked her shoulder where the scorpion had bitten, and there was a big wound. Her arm wasn't even moving. Meanwhile, Wade moved forward and found his bag, from which he took out a bottle. He started drinking his urine from it and collected some for Lisa, so she could also drink and survive. Following the sign of the stick, he started making his way back to her. Lisa, still very scared and worried because Wade wasn't around, started running while calling his name, but she was in such bad condition that she could barely speak. Still, she kept moving forward despite the noise of voice of wild animals around her. Wade came back to the place where he had left Lisa, but by the time he arrived, it was night and she was not there. Wade became frantic and started shouting loudly, Lisa, where are you? Can you hear me? Come to me wherever you are. Lisa heard his voice and responded, Wade, I can hear you. Where are you? It's dark and I can't see anything. After this, they began looking for each other. Even after searching for a long time, when they still couldn't find each other, they got tired and collapsed, becoming unconscious. The next morning, Lisa woke up feeling extremely thirsty. Her condition was terrible, her face was pale, and her lips were dry. It had been three days since they were stuck in the desert, and Lisa hadn't drunk a single drop of water. Desperate to quench her thirst, she sucked on trees and plants, trying to extract moisture. Wade also woke up and it was clear his mental state was deteriorating. He drank his urine again, and despite his worsening condition, stood up and started moving forward. Two paths appeared in front of him. He chose one and began walking, and finally, he reached their car. Seeing the car, he felt a little relief and said, thank God, I got the fruit of my hard work. He quickly entered the car and started looking for food, but unfortunately, he does not get anything except a lighter. That's why he was disappointed and sat in the car. Then he started driving the car carefully, but the car was not starting because, before leaving from here, he had left the lights on, which drained the battery of the car. He got very angry and started hitting the car hard because all his hard work was ruined. He came out and, exhausted, lay down there. After that, he made a very difficult decision. He opened the bonnet of the car, the lid of the engine, and started drinking the water from it which was very difficult because that water was like petrol. By doing this, he was risking his life. He was breathing fast, feeling nauseous, but he did it, thinking that the urine that would form after drinking this water, he could collect it for Lisa to drink, which would save her life as well. After drinking all of it, he left to find Lisa. It was night, and he was screaming, Lisa, Lisa, searching for her everywhere, but there was still no clue about her. Lisa was actually sitting in one place when she noticed that there was still a little battery left in her mobile. She left a message for Wade. Meanwhile, because of drinking the engine water, Wade's condition was getting very bad. He was having severe stomach pains and was also feeling cold. Despite his pain, with great difficulty, he lay down there. Using a lighter, she lit a fire to save herself from the cold. The next morning, when Lisa woke up, to satisfy her hunger and thirst, she tried once again to eat grass, but once again, she failed and lay down there, feeling sick. Then she noticed a line where she was lying, the same line that Wade had made with a stick and was following. Realizing this, she followed the line and eventually came to Wade, who was lying on the ground in a very bad condition. Lisa rushed to him and hugged him, but taking care of him and encouraging him, repeatedly asking, are you okay, Wade? 
Although he was not okay, he told her he was fine, saying, Thank God you found me. Otherwise, I was thinking I would never see you again. And Lisa, forgive me. All the mistakes are mine. I am responsible for getting us stuck here. Lisa replied, Keep quiet, Wade. Don't blame yourself. Everything will be fine and we will go together towards the car. Just have courage. Saying this, she put her head on his chest and lay down beside him. But she was worried because Wade was coughing up blood. Wade gave his collected urine to Lisa, who asked, What is this, Wade? And why are you giving it to me? Wade replied, This is for you. Drink it so you can survive. I collected it with great difficulty, and if something happens to me, follow this line and go to the car. Can you do this? Lisa, crying, said, No, Wade, I will not go without you. Why are you saying this again and again? Suddenly, Wade started vomiting, and seeing this, Lisa began crying a lot, screaming for help. She couldn't bear to see Wade's condition because he was shaking. Lisa told him, I love you so much, and we will leave here together. Then we will get married. Please say something. What is happening to you? But he didn't respond. Lisa tried to call him several times, but he passed away in her hands. After that, she was so broken that she started crying uncontrollably, screaming for help, and finally exhausted, sat next to his body. The next day, with great courage to stay alive, she drank Wade's urine to survive. After that, she continued forward, determined not to let Wade's sacrifice go to waste. After great difficulty and stumbling, she finally reached the car. First, she took out Wade's wedding ring, and after seeing it, she cried a lot, remembering all the moments she had spent with him. Suddenly, the most dangerous snake in the desert entered the car. The snake gradually began to climb on Lisa, but she sat still without moving, knowing that one wrong move could mean death. She was waiting for the snake to leave, but it wasn't going anywhere. It wrapped around her legs, passed over her arms, and was reaching her neck, which she was barely able to bear. Once the snake left, she got out of the car, locked the door, and lay down, holding on to the last memory of Wade, the wedding ring. She immediately put the ring on and, exhausted, lay down. That night, she watched videos of her and Wade on this journey and remembered him. Another night passed like this. The next morning, Lisa felt even weaker. She had no strength left to move her body. She was on the brink of death when someone came and gave her water. When Lisa opened her eyes, she thought she saw Wade in front of her, but it was actually a rescue officer who had come after seeing the SOS signal Wade had left behind. The officer helped and supported Lisa, taking her to safety. This meant that Wade's sacrifice had not been in vain. Lisa was finally saved, and Wade's body was recovered and handed over to his family. According to the report, Wade had died due to kidney failure caused by drinking the engine water. Later, Lisa started working at a nursing school to restart her life. The film's story ends here.